Welcome back to the debrief. It is uh, it's Monday morning, so technically the men's and women's combined qualifiers have finished already, but we're going to pretend that hasn't happened yet because this is so much climbing in the course of like a week and a half. My head's going to explode if I have to pretend to remember any of this. So this week, we're John and I were just going to talk about the, I think we're calling it like the classic world championships now. So the yep. bouldering, the lead and the speed. Um, I know you were away a little bit, so you had to like find Wi-Fi in the middle of the woods or some crap to watch any of this stuff. Did you manage to see enough of it to feel confident talking about this? I did. I, I watched. Yeah, I, I've watched it. I've rewatched it. I, I think actually one of the things that I wanted to pose to you maybe at the very end is is how much climbing is too much climbing to watch in terms of viewer fatigue this is already um, too much climbing when it's 13 hours off of my schedule like it is yeah. genuinely like there was one day for the bouldering uh semis and finals i tried to stay awake for all of it and like couldn't do it and then after that of course it wrecks your schedule because you were up at 3 45 in the morning and crap like that that was the only time i tried otherwise it's just been watching recaps but it is too much i haven't seen all of it i haven't watched the qualifiers for most of the things it's just been like it's so much man yeah, God bless Mike Langley and Charlie Bosco. I don't know how their voices are holding, managing to hold up, but they should get a get a lozenge sponsorship or something for next <laughs> next World Championships yeah. because yeah. Uh, I, I can only imagine having to, I mean, just having to comment commentate on all these rounds and, mm-hmm. and keep it all straight too yeah. it's not not to mention the jet lag and all that so sure yeah i think uh i think just the, the trip to japan by itself would knock me out probably and then having to do yeah. the job for so many days straight and aside from them of course the athletes too if we're talking about how much climbing is too much climbing we st- almost started seeing it before like the bouldering was even finished man like in finals just some some really tired climbers and then the next day you're starting with your lead qualifiers but i think let's not get ahead of ourselves let's just start with the bouldering let's go chronologically uh last time we spoke one of the things i was really excited about was getting to see if yanya could cap her her streak of winning all of the boulder world cups if she could cap it off with the world championship uh even though i was like slowly starting to think that uh chai and seo would like possibly become a competitor there but she did it and uh she joins a very small club of people that have won a season and won the world champ the world championships just uh her anastor and uh sandrine levey are the only three that have won a season and the world championships and of course yanya's is the most dominant by far because she didn't give anybody a chance in any of those world cups um pretty incredible i think it's it really caps it for me yeah, I mean, what? There's not much else to say other than it, it's just it. It felt right, you know. Like, I mean, as much as you don't want, that's not how sports works. Like, you can't. It, it, but it, it, in this sense, it's like it just. It would have felt strange if anybody else had had won the world championships in the year for bouldering where Yanya had been so ridiculously dominant. Um, and and as much as we've talked about how she's kind of had her struggles on the lead season so far um you know s- struggles for yanya is is <laughs> still pretty pretty elite but uh but she just slipped back into the bouldering dominance as if it as if it was nothing it was awesome yeah. it was incredible i so to start off semifinals set a really unusual stage for finals women's semifinals was unbelievably difficult seeing some people get through into finals without any tops and if we talk about the days on end of climbing make one of those days a day where you are putting in endless attempts and getting no success from it on new volumes very high friction like talk about just a a a nightmare of a round for trying to preserve yourself through three disciplines but then the finals for women was was the breath of fresh air that was such a great round I, i think i have the uh I'll just pull up the the boulders very quickly. I'm going to scooch yeah. through the men's first, um, but yeah, I do. You want to talk a little bit about your reflections of uh of the women's boulder finals while we're on it? You yeah, sure. That... Yeah, what did I mention? I I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to let you talk, and I'll I'll figure out which boulder we're talking about. <laughs> well, I I thought that you know it's we can start with boulder number one because I thought it was a really it was really exciting that Shauna uh, she comes out she climbs first and she she's struggling on it and then and then she sends it f- finally with like i think it was like eight seconds left or something like that um and i think in terms of just setting a stage for an exciting finals that was 
Um, it was an awesome send. It's also, it, it's just great if you look at Shauna's narrative over the last two years with the injuries and stuff. So to come out and do that on the first boulder, I was, I was psyched. I was writing the, as I was watching and taking notes, I was writing the timestamps and that was like the, I was like right away, this is a highlight of the round. It's Shauna's send with, as time is ticking down. That was such uh, a particularly tense boulder for me with Shauna's attempt because if you remember at the very start she was standing in the doorway waiting to come out on problem number one and there was some delay I think I did, did somebody say it was like a timer issue or something but yeah. so Shauna Coxie just standing there in the door her flow ruined probably at this point and then comes out to an extremely difficult boulder and yeah that relief in the last 10 seconds of getting the top of it was so incredible and kind of caps you know, so many questions I'm sure you had about Shauna Coxie this season. She had good performances at her first two World Cups, bails on the rest of the season, trying to balance her training as well as past injuries. And I think she's probably one of the success stories, or sorry, success stories coming out of this season. You look at people like Miho as well that have tried to balance the training for all three and an injury. And Shauna has so far looked like she's come through that kind of storm better off. Yeah, and it's interesting with Shauna, too, because she has been one of the most public competitors about really focusing and training on for the combined format. You know, she's been very public about that in her social media and in interviews and stuff. It's like, yeah, we know that all competitors are sort of adopting the combined training, but Shauna has been very out front with it. And it has paid off. I, I had the same thought when I was watching this. I think that Shauna is... You, you know, I know we don't want to get too much into the combined and the Olympics and all that, but she's she her and her coaching, because let's give them credit too, uh, to to go from being just pretty much a bouldering purist, I think, on the competition stage uh, just 100%. a few years ago, you know, and 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 to now be uh, a, a real viable threat in the combined format um, and to do it all with this past two years that has been just injury prone. And, na and now with her with her good performance at these worlds, it's like, we don't know, well, was she really that injured or was she injured? And then she just decided to sort of be cautious and take some time off to, to hopefully peak, mm -hmm. at, you know, at the worlds. It's like, we, it's, it's, you don't know because hindsight is 2020. So, um, but yeah, great, great show for Sean in the bouldering. Absolutely. And it, and it was, and it kicked off with that. And, and I wanted to go back and mention, not to get too off topic, but when Shauna was waiting in the wings there with the lighting, the dramatic lighting mm. of the world championships, um, the like moody blues and greens, uh, you know, almost like, a, like, I don't know, like Darth Vader lighting or something. Oh, yeah. There's, cool, there are going to be some incredible pictures of that doorway just having the top down light on them. Like, yeah. really, really going to be nuts. It's um, like just there, like from here up is is yeah. lit, and everything else is shrouded in shadows and shade, and and uh, but I loved it. I mean, that's like the spectacle is something that we've we've talked about before is something that's going to draw in new viewers is going to be the presentation, mm -hmm. right? You have to present it like a, a big event, a big spectacle. All these little bells and whistles. As much as some people can complain about them, they. They appeal to people that expect that because people are coming from watching other sports that have that stuff. Sure. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's move on to Boulder number two, which had yeah. one of the best moments of the bouldering final in, in women's. And all of this is with the caveat that men's bouldering finals was kind of shit. Um, but the women's, women's number two, no tops on it. Yanya comes out as the last woman, has taken a few burns, not really going for her. And then... I'm sure just as the camera crew, just as the director had kind of given up hope on this, of course, she does manage to top. And all I can imagine is the director falling out of his chair and <laughs> button mashing because everything just goes crazy. For <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I told you, we get that like oh. subliminal message of Shauna Coxie there all of a sudden uh, intercut with uh, with Yanya's. That, I mean, that to people that might not have watched it as closely or watched it at all that move that Yanya stuck right when the camera cut away was kind of the big crux because everybody every other uh or most of the other women when they were trying to do that they they couldn't hold this the swing yeah. the, the you know they couldn't like put the wrist down and then hold the barn door um and then as soon as Yanya <laughs> sticks it I yeah like you said I don't know what happens the director uh 
<laughs> you got to assume like slightly half asleep because it was a boring as hell problem to watch up until that moment. And yeah. I'm assuming as he falls out of his chair, he just reaches for the desk and slams every button on the computer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I'm, I'm assuming that all of those individual video feeds were probably like recording to a backup, hopefully, because you hope that somebody has a clean video <laughs> of that send somewhere yeah. in the archives because it'll suck if that's the only copy we have of a of a really pretty cool moment. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, arguably that's as as great as Yanya's World Championship was and and has been. That's that's arguably the the highlight. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was shades of Adam Andre at Mayringen, right? Where like yes. all the competitors before can't do it, can't do it, and and Yanya. She did it, you know, with relative ease. I don't think that was her flash attempt. I think I, I can't no. recall, um, but uh, but certainly didn't struggle nearly as much with that that swinging move that was only like the first or s second move in the in the boulder. It wasn't mm -hmm. that high up at all. Yeah, uh, she just like like Yanya does. You know, whenever she struggles, she sort of um, she gets really cerebral and like analyzes it almost like a like computer like and she just figures out what she needs to do the little tweaks that she needs to make and then she executes and that's exactly what she did it was watching her tear it down was really just vintage yanya and and the fact that no other competitor could do it just just adds to, just adds to it being vintage yanya and it right? was it was kind of in effect to the winning moment in that it gave her that leg up over a lot of other athletes now when you get to boulder number three she couldn't figure that one out you know she was in a really good situation and then the pressure was on on three other people topped it she did not yeah. um which gave i guess the slightest bit of suspense of like will she get a bonus on on women's number four um and i guess we can just throw that yeah in i'm looking at fun. this so it was Sorry to interrupt you. Miho and uh, and Kazbikova topped it, um, and this was the the slab, or at least I think the no. This was yeah. This was the the upper section was slabby. The red one, right? right? I'm remembering this. Um, I think I'll have a picture of it in a second. I, Where this, are we? Yeah, let's. That might have been this one. Bold, th this is the yeah. This is Boulder Three. I believe. Yeah, the uh, the little um, pinch thing on the uh, on the zone volume. Yeah, and this was the the slabby. The slabby problem with the kind of full commitment jump to that little red and black dish at the top. Um, so, so Miho topped it. Kazmikova topped it. Um, who didn't? Shauna did not top it. Yanya did not top it. Akio did not top it. Um, so this just kind of kept the drama going for for the round, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, not really like too dramatic. I mean. Uh, it sows a little bit of doubt when they can't top something that everybody else is topping. But after seeing some success on the women's number four, it looked like it was a lock. And of course, Yanya owned it. Um, yeah. yeah, let's uh, let's keep it rolling. And I think we have to talk about the men's because it seems to be something that's gotten a lot of discussion, especially in the root setting circles. I'll just kind of yeah. like plow through uh, some images of the problems. This was men's number one, a really beautiful problem. And I have to say, I think all of the boulders looked amazing. So that's one thing that we can't fault them on. They were all very aesthetic, intriguing boulders. So I'm 100% going to give them uh, props for, for that. And I'll be honest, I really like the climbs. I, I'm, I don't want to put it as much as they were obviously too hard. So men's finals only saw two tops. Both of them were from Tomoe and Narasaki. Nobody else got any tops. And of course, the joke is Adam Andra scored, you know, the quattro, just like four zeros. Could barely get off the start of uh, men's number one. Um, and so I was looking back, trying to find when was the last time there was a Boulder finals that saw like only two tops. And the last time was in, uh, a, it was like a week ago that I talked about this, but it was, uh, I think it was Vienna 2011. Um, and so I went back, I just wanted to see what did a boulder final look like eight years ago that only saw two tops. And when you look at the, and of course it's like Udo Newman's, one of Udo Newman's, uh, uh, world cup reports. Cause I don't think there's evidence of a live stream, uh, yet at that point. And you're looking at these boulder problems and they look like pedestrian at this point, eight years mm -hmm. removed. And these problems wrecked the field at this time. Uh, and so looking at these problems from from uh, from this year how beautiful they are how close some people were in a lot of these moves and knowing how tired they were after like two full days of hard climbing as well as more days to come it 
I, I think I really actually liked these boulders. I was very disappointed in the results. I did not enjoy myself as I watched the men's finals. But I feel like two years from now, these boulders are going to be competitive, great boulder problems. And I think I'm, I'm getting some kind of like mm-hmm. some joy out of looking at them and knowing that this is where the future is. It's going to be it's going to be this amazing uh, in fairly short order. Yeah. And I think that that is all aided by the fact that at least Tomoa did get a couple tops. I think I wrote in my recap that like, geez, can you imagine if Tomoa had not been in this final? <laughs> like, totally. We, just like uh, talk about a total bust. But um, he at least salvaged a little bit of the the viewer enjoyment of it. And I think he, the fact that he did send a couple of them uh, just illustrates your point. Yeah. The, I mean, the, everybody's going to rise eventually, whether it's a year from now, two years from now, 10 years from now. They're going to rise to whoever is the best in the field right now, um, right. just like they are in the women's, um, because that's how – that's how sports go, right? Like we think, we think that uh, a competitor, like even even someone as miraculous as Yanya, right? We think we can't possibly imagine anybody ever being better than Yanya. Um, but that's what's great about sports is that there's always somebody that that comes along that that rewrites the books. Um, mm-hmm. Just it just, it just might not be within our you know our viewing time. Might be ten years from now or twenty years. Who knows? But I think your your point is well taken. Um, I kind of. Like you, I was not like I came away from the finals not as bummed out the men's the men's bouldering finals not as bummed out as I as I maybe thought I would be if I if you had told me that there were only two tops and and I wasn't really as bummed out as I know some other people online have been uh, have been expressing their disappointment in it because I think it's such a sweet science trying to find that exact right degree of of route setting with tops and attempts and all that and. I would. I, I mean, let me ask you. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a final like this, where there was only two tops, or would you rather have it skew in the other direction, where every competitor is topping everything? And if I give, if I'll tell you, if I had those two choices, I would prefer it like like it was, where you know we're really pushing the difficulty, and we're not getting a lot of tops because, for no other point than like you said, this at least gives us a glimpse into the future. Yeah, I think so. the 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 hard part about this one was that there's very little tension throughout the throughout the uh, event, and like just a lot of a lot of boring time. And you can get that too with lots of tops. So between the two of them, they're both rough. Um, I think, like, I have a lot of problems with the World Championships in that it's the same format as a World Cup, and for some reason, it holds more prestige than a World Cup just because of the title it has. Um, So I appreciate that for a world championship event, it was so freaking hard. It made it clear that Tomoa was the best climber out of those six. Now, not super psyched on who the six were. Like I'm not totally hyped on the podium for this world championship. I got, they're all great athletes, but a podium of Tomoa, Jakob Schubert and Yannick Floey, that's not my dream podium for a world championship. I think, I think you average it out. Those wouldn't, be the top three guys uh they won the event whatever um but i'm glad that tomoa showed some dominance uh it makes that part feel better it makes it feel like a more valid win and i'm more willing to to give the world championship more weight if uh you know if the field of the whole event is stacked and you come out and you just show yourself to be so much better than those that those that made it to finals with you so Mm -hmm. i hard to say what i prefer i'm really glad at least that the winner was obvious at the like at the very least uh, the gold medal is kind of indisputable. Well, I have a qu- another question I want to pose to you, but we can go through the other boulders first if you have if if, if you want to. If you I don't really want to talk them, but... about the men's boulders. Like, just look yeah. at pictures of them. You're not going to have any fun watching the event, really. Um, I hope we can get to climb on those in a couple of years. That's all I got. No, feel free to ask. Well, the the one thing, like, <clears throat> excuse me, the the boulder number one, I really liked because it struck me as the it, it was so. Quint, it, it's like this is an Olympic boulder. Like this is what bouldering looks like in the age of the 2020 Olympics. Yeah. You know, with um, like a funky sort of trotting start into a toe catch dynamic, yeah. like toe catch, and then there's like a I think it's like a double clutch or it's like a sort of a, a, a traversy dynamic move. Yeah, like um, and, and then, yeah, and then just like a crazy uh, thunder 
like <laughs> under thumb cling uh, for the mm-hmm. top. Um, just I, as I was watching it, I was like, if you had shown this to the competitors, like you mentioned in 2011, or let's even go back further to like the 90s, if you had shown this this problem to a to a boulder back then. Um, it would have just blown their mind. I they mean, they would have ripped so... it to shit. They would have been like, "Yo, this playground, like, what parkour probably wasn't like even a word in right. like, common parlance at that point." Uh, no, yeah, there's been like a, a whole lot of people ripping the Boulder Finals about like being too many jumps and this and that. Like, fuck it. That these boulders were great. Um, the difficulty didn't work out for the men's, but these are awesome boulders. This is what bouldering is. If you want, like. It's not like these people can't crimp and don't have to crimp for these problems. It's not like they don't have incredible body positioning. Like the finish on men's number one, that's one of the sketchiest finishes I've ever seen. Like I would not place gear off that. You would not place gear off that. Like it's, these are really hard boulders. And yeah, it's got some jumps in it. That's where it's going. It makes this discipline stand out, especially now that all three of them have to be, you know, they all have to live together. Now bouldering gets a bit more of an identity and that's a good thing. Um, I think it's a beautiful boulder as well. Uh, Having the, like, um, what am I trying to say? Having the grippable surface be kind of the the neutral color, the same color as the wall, it might not be like my ideal thing, but it was still a great boulder. Like wood seems to be coming in that it looks really nice. It set itself apart and it was clean, right? Um, I thought it was a great problem. Well, and to anybody who, because I understand the 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 arguments when people say that they don't like the parkour stuff, mm-hmm. I get it. But I understand I, that you can't do the parkour stuff. You're too right. Well, bad. I, have two, I have two things. First of all, I remember something. I think it was Chris Danielson said in an interview um, that you can't just have the traditional crimp hall because no. these competitors are so strong nowadays that you, we would get just no separation Mm -hmm. from them. I mean, talk about tops and tops and tops and tops, right? It would just be, it'd be ridiculous. And anybody who has seen the, the crimps and the edges that these like 15, 16, 17 year old crushers today are able to hang off of it's, it, that becomes a pretty obvious point. And I think it's a good point. But secondly, think in your mind what it's like, think of the Olympics and think of the stadiums and the crowds and Imagine that bouldering in this day and age, competition bouldering, it has to translate to that entertainment, that crowd setting. If you're sitting in like the, you know, 300th row <laughs> watching mm-hmm. a, watching bouldering that, that is, is really, really far away, what is going to be more exciting? Watching somebody just move up these crimps that you can't see at all from where you're sitting or watch somebody do these kind of big body movements, uh, these dynamic parkour things. That, that do translate the distance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that, like, I, I, yeah, we're here. Parkour, parkour is here to stay, the parkour style. Um, people can either get used to it or just end up continuing to complain, I guess. I, yeah. I, I, but like I said, I mean, I get it. I get what where that where people are coming from. Well, the, the one thing I'd argue with is, is there seems to be like some kind of argument that the parkour means that the holds are like better or that the holds are good or some shit. Like go to a Boulder World Cup, take a look at the footholds, take a look at the handholds. Like if you can manage to pull yourself off the ground on any of this shit, then go for it. Like the feet are terrible. The hands are, look, just look at the screw-ons that were used in some of these problems. Like these are terrible crimps. They're terrible pinches. And it's not, you know, like, oh, this big lateral, like three, seven step, like nine phase dyno off jugs. It's off like ridiculous slopers and terrible footholds. So they are still having to grip like mad, grip stuff that you cannot grip. And I'm sorry, you, I mean like the internet of like mountain project or whatever. Like, guess what? You can't hold these statically and these guys are having to jump off it. So if you're complaining that somehow it doesn't show their like climbing ability of being able to hold on to stuff, you're a hundred percent nuts and you should probably just like stay, stay yeah. on the internet. Well, and to, the point I wanted to ask you about was where, so after... Tomoa wins this world championship. He won in uh, 2016, right? So he's a two-time champion for bouldering. And just to note, he is the only male, he's the only guy to ever win a bouldering season and a world championships in the same year, and he did it twice. Yeah, and so my question to you is where do people rank him? I know know you love these greatest discussions, the greatest. (laughs) (laughs) Where do we rank Tomoa in terms of competition boulders in the discussion of greatest of all time? Because I think he undoubtedly is 
it's I mean, he's in the discussion, if nothing else. Um, but you look at his World Cup results, especially this year. I wrote him down. He was second at Meiringen, second at Chongqing. He won at Wujang, and he was second at Vail. Um, so he, which is phenomenal results, but not dominant uh, <laughs> like Yanya, as you know, nobody is. But um, he's just, it's an interesting, he's an interesting case because he doesn't, there's like the hardcore fan base of competition climbing, and then the one sphere removed from that, there's just kind of the people that sort of know about it, watch it from time to time. I feel like the hardcore fans, they know that Tomoa is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, male boulders, competition boulders. I don't know if he is really, I don't know if he's he's really got that reputation to the, the wider fan base. I don't really know why that is. Um, I, like, curious to get your thoughts. So for, for, try and do like adjust your lens from from like what a, a dominant boulder in, in the women's field to the dominant boulder in a men's field is is like a, a huge adjustment because for the women, you see these incredible eras of like win, 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 like Yanya, like Anna, like uh, Sandrine, these people just like back to back, just like neck covered in gold. For men, that doesn't happen as much. The, I think like 2016, 2017, that was the era where Tomoa basically was silver, 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 silver like for like two years, silver at every freaking event. And it was the people in, in the first place that were always uh, shifting around. It was never necessarily the same people. Um, I think he is, you know, I haven't looked at it enough for me to say what I think for sure. But there have definitely been moments this season where I get annoyed that he's not in first place because you'll see, a, like, losing by a single attempt from, like, in a, was it, I can't remember if it was, um, which World Cup it was, if it was Wujang or, uh, or Chongqing, but, like, just fluffing the, the start position, like, these little mm-hmm. dumb things that have cost him gold medals. And I've never dove in and taken a hard look at his uh, climbing, but he's one of those guys where I feel like a lot of it comes down to these tiny things. And I think he is one of the greatest, like, undoubtedly. He's on the podium way too often not to be. But you don't see him with as many gold medals as I think you would expect for somebody that we would call, like, the, the greatest ever or something like that. Um, that said, you can go back as far as you want, and you're not going to find many people that can can get super comparable. Like, even somebody like Killian Fishhuber, who, as I started watching Bolt, was kind of like the guy just always on a podium even he was was rarely consistently in first place so i think that's a great discussion for for people to keep having yeah i'd be really curious for people even in the comments to chime in and where because i would just be interested to, to hear how other people like where do other people rank tomoa in terms of the greatest the discussion of the greatest competition boulders of all time it's because we haven't, especially in recent times, had that consistent top competitor who's who's first, first, first. Because we haven't had that, it it kind of makes this discussion m- more interesting, but also a little harder to get a consensus. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, uh, and I think the the last thing I just want to talk about with bouldering, just to like squeeze in so, a little bit of like Canada, because I know I've been skipping that hmm. the last couple debriefs, is Alana Yip had her second best bouldering event ever. Uh, a couple years ago, she came fifth in Chongqing, uh, but seventh place, second best result, huge deal in getting her like through the combined thing. And that's like, a, a, I think it's a result she should be proud of, isolated from any combined pressures, like in a field like this where everybody showed up, that's like an awesome result. The one thing yeah. about it being women's semifinals was hard as shit, and it did come down yeah. to zones. Um, but great, amazing result from Elena Yip. Super proud of that. Uh, so yeah, can't wait to see what happens next over the next couple of days. Yeah, I was excited for Elena. Also, that was she did she did a great job. I um I, I think McCall Chan was fourteenth if I mm. recall if I remember in the bouldering. Um, so yeah, I have the I have the results for the the. I know I usually run down the results for the U.S. Yeah, so I can run down those for any uh, American viewers um, in the women. Oh, well, so before I do that, uh, let's talk about Che Yun because that, uh. that, you know, that was, um, <laughs> that was one of the big questions yeah. in our other debriefs heading into this world championship was how is Che Yun So of South Korea going to do in the 
in the combined format, but specifically kind of the other disciplines. We know she can crush in in lead when she's on top of her game, but so it was like, how is she going to do in speed? How is she going to do in bouldering? Um, she ended up getting 13th in the bouldering. Yep. Um, did not make it to the finals. No. Nope. Uh, what are you <laughs> I, I think this I is was, a, this is a larger discussion about Cheon's world championship. I think. Yeah. Uh, so like I I I am super guilty of like overhyping her of getting really excited because what would be more exciting than a dark horse showing up to a world championship and just crushing people's dreams like that? That would be such a fun thing uh, to talk about. Yeah, it didn't work out. The bouldering wasn't a perfect result from her. She yeah she finished thirteenth. She had a good result coming out of qualifiers, topped everything in a brutal semifinals. She only got two bonuses or two zones uh, when she needed three. Um, It's really hard to say. That's like a knife's edge kind of thing that you're dealing with. Uh, But she certainly didn't show the kind of dominance that we saw in the lead climbing over the last couple months. Um, So I don't like the the, 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 like guilty fanboy bandwagon hopping part of me is is a little sad because I kind of wanted to see her come out as as like a mad crusher in all three disciplines. Uh, but I think it's an entirely reasonable result considering uh, how new she is, the field, all that kind of stuff. Like, 13th at a world championship among that field, she killed it. Um, it's not the gold yeah. I was hoping for. I'll have to, like, stow all my Team Korea jerseys in the closet for one more year, <laughs> but whatever. Well, it's two things. It's interesting to think about. I, I just think, the the first of all, the, the world championships, nothing can prepare you for that. I would imagine from the athlete's perspective, it's, you know, you can do world cups, but I'm sure the atmosphere and the expectations and the hype and all that is just a whole different ball game when you're in the world championships. Maybe some of that came into play for Cheyon. Maybe it was just a little overwhelming as great as she is. We have to kind of remind ourselves that she is only 15 years old. Um, and she is extremely new to adult competition, the adult competition circuit. So, um, I like, like you, I was a little, uh, bummed out, I guess. It's like I was bummed out, but then I was like, well, she was 13th in the world in bouldering. Like, that's pretty darn yeah. good. <laughs> so, yeah, not very often um, you get you get that high in a world championship in your first season, so still right. pretty exemplary, but uh, yeah. I, I do think, I do wonder how the world championships on the whole is going to impact the rest of her lead World Cup season because I think it was very obvious that she was kind of in a rhythm she sort of had some momentum on those first three lead world cups it's like she was second and then she was first and then she was first will this disrupt everything kind of disrupt the the mojo or whatever i don't know we'll have to wait and see it's it'll be interesting to to find out um if she can just kind of uh almost like just hop over whatever happens at the world championships and continue in the lead season or if this is gonna just play with her mind or you know maybe physically she's going to be drained from the world championships who knows well i think it's uh, i think the what i'm most interested to see whether or not it has any effect is now that the world championships is done the window for people to qualify for the olympics is going to be smaller the importance of the toulouse event is is going to get even bigger and it's not that far after the last three uh lead world cups of the season so i'm curious what attendance is going to be like she might be one of those people that says I'm probably not going to go to all of these. She might give up the chance of winning the uh, the World Cup series. Um, maybe some other people are going to skip it, and that opens up a bigger door for for uh, so. But uh, so I don't know. Um, yeah. It'll be neat to see what happens. Uh, but you're right about the rhythm; it might mess things up. But she will likely be one of those people that still has to fight for the combined, and so mm-hmm. it might change her rhythm permanently for the next year. We'll yeah. see what happens. Uh, yep. We gotta we gotta move on to the next. Okay, thing. let we me got... let me run through the the U.S. So the, uh, in the women's for the bouldering, uh, uh, Kyra Kani was 14th. N- Natalie Grossman was tied for 23rd. Uh, Ashima Shirishi was tied for 29th. Alex Johnson tied for 33rd. Uh, Brooke Rabatou tied for 41st, and Sienna Kopf was tied for 49th. Um, in the men's for the bouldering, uh, Drew Ruana was the high. The highest, uh, he was eighth. Nathaniel Coleman was 17th. Zach Gala tied for 31st. Sean Bailey tied for 33rd. Joe Goodacre tied for 51st. And uh, John Brosler tied for 79th. Did you say so. Brooke Rabatou finished 44th in Boulder? I, so that is, you probably heard me stumble because that's what I wrote down. Uh, I As I was reading it, I was like, hmm, that's... <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, I you could double check that um, if you're if you're in there. I, I totally trust you. I just that like now you know with the 
with the uh, with the hindsight we have. Yeah, now, right. She's a name that we might be talking seemed... about uh, in the next episode of. But um... where the fuck am I? Final. Forty. Uh, oh, 41st. Sorry, 41. But yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. Did I say 40? I don't know what I said. I, I but, heard yeah. 44th, but anyway. Okay, not, sorry. Not a big uh, deal. Still, no, that's... Okay, so anyway. It is she, surprising, She though. must have done well in the other disciplines. So. Uh, yeah, speed and lead. Not to... You know, we don't want to give any spoilers away, but yeah. uh, she, um, interesting. Interesting, if nothing else, that yeah. she, she was at low on the on the women's bouldering. Yeah. Um, All right, let's talk about lead. Um I love these. I thought the lead was amazing. I thought the so first of all, yeah. the the I'm honestly really happy with how it turned out with a short lead wall because the roots were so um so dynamic in terms of of just storytelling and so much motion and you got so many cool moves because it doesn't it wasn't just like upwards the entire way you got that weaving throughout the wall to add those extra moves plus the the problems were beautiful um one of the setters flo uh flo mernig he he posted a photo because i think they always had like one route that was blue and red and one that was like yellow and black and so he posted a photo of optimus prime and bumblebee and apparently those nice. are like the code words they were using for uh for their uh lead problems but just like beautiful walls uh yeah. incredible problems and i thought the the field performed really well i was just really happy with the results after seeing a boulder final that felt kind of like whack um I wonder what I can show. Yeah, and you had mentioned the wall, so I wrote down the the it was a 12 meter wall, and uh, the men's route had 41 holds. I think the women had like 44 or 45, mm -hmm. and um, so you can see because it was only 12 meters, um, a lot of S curves, a lot of like traversy sections, but um, I loved it. I loved it. I think. Uh, even including the World Cup season, I think this is the men's and the women's were probably my favorite um, lead routes that we've seen. I actually really love the women's semifinal as well. I know we're not going to talk about the semifinals too much, but it did have this neat section, uh, like a campus, a, a, a section where some competitors did like a 360 uh, kind of campus move, and then other competitors decided to go like a cross arm. Um, and it was really kind of split how who did who did it which way. So mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool in the semifinals. Um, so even tracing back to the semifinal route uh, yeah. round, I thought the routes the routes were just they were great for lead. Yeah, I, I just had up. I'll put it back up again. Yeah. Uh, the graphics that we were seeing from the TV company out in Japan are really coming together, and I'm excited for the Olympics because these little pieces they're putting together are great. So I think this is the online observation 3D modeling thing. But superimposing the path on these things, I think, is a huge help for non-climbers. Uh, even for somebody like me, sometimes it's hard to preview like where the path actually goes, especially if you're unfamiliar with the scale of the wall or the scale of the holds. You don't really know how a body fits in. Um, but this simple kind of graphic here, I thought, was excellent. And then, of course, they also had the high points graphic, yes. which we've been waiting for to come back. Like that's uh, that's that's one that uh, has been you know, desperately awaited for the last couple of years uh, since it's been, uh, don't want to sing a Kelly Clarkson song, but since it's been gone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, that was, that was kind of just one separate little high point about the lead climbing. Uh, other than that, I men's finals was kind of tight and not like a, a super great show, but yeah. the climb was great. And I honestly did think Alex Magos thought he had it in the bag. He was looking yeah. so good. And of course, Adam Andra, who ended up winning it, even kind of gave it to him like, you know, I thought for sure this guy was going to win it. Um, but uh, yeah, Andra... was it, a foot, it was a foot slip, I think, if I'm rem remembering correctly on Magos. I think it was just like a little like something popped. Um, it's yeah, I can't I can't quite remember. He was like right up there with everybody else, right? Tied with Jakob and ahead yeah. of the rest of the crew and just one move south of uh, of Andra. But it was just but... a really hard position. It reminded me so much of uh, was it Brienne Son, where it was the same kind of thing on the green men's final where they're yeah. out to the top right of the wall, just coming around the head wall, trying to deal with like an awkward clipping area. It was so reminiscent of that. It was nuts. It was. And Magos looked he looked so strong. I mean, he looked like he, he could have kept crushing. It was mm -hmm. just a heartbreaking slip uh, um and uh and he and, and like you said in the post the post climb interview andra just kind of admitted that uh you know a, a luck in quotes as much as you can get lucky with <laughs> climbing mm -hmm. incredibly well but uh this is andra's attempt or, or his uh yeah his attempt on the on the finals route here 
Yeah, no, beautiful route. I think the the like the the one big surprise for me was seeing a name like Hans Pumann in finals and seeing like some of the other names that didn't make it through, especially after uh, some uh, some great performances through the World Cup season. Yeah. Uh, like Doman Skofic, like just missed out in tenth place because of a little bottleneck tie in semifinals that had to go back to qualies. Um, but missing out on on classic winners like Hanwell Kim and just from like a couple of weeks ago, Hidemasa Nishida. Um, Romain de Grange kind of disappointing that he didn't get further. Like that's a name that I want to see in the finals of a world championship if he's going to show up. Uh, yeah. So results wise, it was all around pretty good, but still a few names that were uh, were dropped earlier than I would uh, would hope for. Yeah, it's yeah. Your point about Roman is is too bad because he is he's a he's a veteran. So he's some if if anybody has ever watched the World Cup circuit within the last ten years, he's a name that that they know. Um, and it's you you want uh, you just you want France, given the the history, the climbing history and and whatnot. You want France to be represented in the Olympics in a way. It, it, it only it feels right, you know what I mean, um, to get to get a representative from France in there. So, um, so it's too bad about Roman. And I think of Roman as kind of like I mean, there's obviously some incredible rope specific climbers in this World Championship. Like Andre and Magos by themselves are incredibly talented. Not to mention all the other guys. But Roman de Grange has this kind of like final boss of rope climbing. Like you know for sure he's always got it. Like you just assume he's like lives up to that French caricature of a rope climber with like a cigarette in his mouth the entire way up, belaying with one hand, like the scrawny guy that like just. Yeah, I want there to be one of those guys in the final because it makes me laugh, but also because he's kind of like that prototypical French rope climber for me. Um, And especially seeing like, uh, we're going to run out of time, but seeing Manu Cornu and Fanny Mm. Gibert like just have not great weeks, it would have been nice to have somebody uh, come up. Yeah, that was uh, one of the points that I wrote on my. I, I told you maybe we could do like some of the surprises from the competition, and mm-hmm. one of the surprises that I wrote down was just Fanny. Uh, you just feel bad for her. You know, she's a she's a fan favorite. She's fun to watch. She's an incredible climber, and she it just was not her her round for bouldering no. or or uh, I think in the you know bouldering she got like ninth, which which on paper doesn't sound bad but when you consider that fanny she's you know usually like top five you know yeah. so. and bouldering's her strong suit like and, you gotta yep. you gotta make up numbers yeah so that's that was a surprise but yeah. anyway back to the lead um yeah i'll show uh i'll show yanya's uh lead winning attempt of course she won it yeah. and she becomes the first woman or first woman or maybe first person actually i can't remember now first person to win a world championship in two disciplines at the same event so uh, big, big deal. Uh, the podium on this one, seeing another Slovenian in second, Mia Krempel. Like that that by itself was a crazy story. Just thinking back to Munich only a couple yeah. months ago where honestly for a second we thought, shit, is this like a season ending injury that you're dealing with? Uh, I, the, Mia, if, if <laughs> Mia Krempel is, yeah, she's, she's. She's having such a storybook season. It's like you could almost make a documentary about Mia Crample's 2019 uh, World Cup World Championship uh, s- circuit. Uh, it's just because it's had so many ups and downs and emotional swings uh, that it's – yeah, it was exciting. And and Slovenia is we, – we have talked a lot about how Japan is the – undoubtedly the team, just the, the team of crushers, but the Slovenian women – um, are just like they're showing m- more depth. I, it's just it's phenomenal. And it's having it be such a young team. Like there's, I feel like there isn't any longer a. Uh, I don't want to use the word matronly, <laughs> but yeah. but Team Japan has a Kiyonaguchi who's been in the scene forever, and you've got these figureheads, uh, Rei Sugimoto, kind of one of the, the the older guys as well, where you have maybe these uh, older climbers that maybe provide some kind of influence or a connection to the lineage of Japanese climbing. Whereas with Slovenia, you don't have Katja and Maya Vidmar anymore. You don't have Mina Markovic really showing up for this stuff. Actually, was she even here now that I think about it? She might not uh, have been because she's not really a combined climber. I know she was at one of yeah. the World Cups earlier this year. But yeah. you don't uh, you, you don't see those climbers in this field. So when you look at the Slovenian uh, team, especially the women, it is a crazy young team. Like I think Yanya is the oldest one of the Luchkas and the Vidas and the mm-hmm. Mias, right? Like it's a it's a I saw these kids at Youth Worlds just a couple of years ago. 
Yeah, and Yanya's what, 20 years old or something like that, uh, right? Yeah, I, turns 20 this year, yeah. Turns 20, she's, she's not even 20. Um, it's That's... Uh, it, it, that that is interesting not only for the upcoming olympics but i mean you could conceivably think of slovenia then being dominant for you know long ass time now. man yeah uh, and that, that, that's to say nothing of who the slovenian kids that are on the youth world circuit right now the, yeah. the kids that are up and coming in on that team so um yeah pretty incredible i loved i liked the women's route i when i was looking at the results you know what was really exciting to me was that Every for a while there, every competitor got higher than the previous competitor, mm -hmm. which was kind of a cool. Like I wrote it down, it was uh, so. Uh, let's see. Um, well, Vita Lukin was up first, if I remember right, or maybe I'm totally like she, flipping. No, she head. was up um, second to last. Oh uh, Julia, no, I'm totally wrong. Yeah, <laughs> Julia Shannonie was first, and she got to thirty plus, and then um, and then Jessica Pills was up next. She set a new high point. Then Akio was up up next, and she set a new high point. Then I think um, Chaeyoung was next. Chaeyoung set a new. Uh, she tied Akio at 38 plus, and then Mia Crample set a new high point. Um, and so uh, it's just it was it was cool. It was yeah. like uh, you know it's like everybody that came next bettered the previous the previous score. So that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunate about those ties for like third through fifth. Um, what can I say? Uh, yeah. But I mean, when you get like Aimori, Chaeyoung, Seo, and uh, and Akio Naguchi tied. It's probably pretty hard. Yeah, Don't really know section. what to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw it on both of the climbs for uh, for them around that that head wall. Um, fortunate that it happened around the head wall and not somewhere else. Uh, yeah. But again, like a World Cup with no tops for the for the lead finals, so that's kind of a bummer. Were there any tops for even the semifinals? No, then, nothing. Nothing for the semis. Don't was... think so, because Yanya was she finished in first, right? But I don't think she topped it, if I remember yeah. correctly. No, she didn't. Uh, yeah, well. There you go. Wow. But hey, it did a good job. And at least we didn't have that terrible tension of somebody early coming out and setting like a ridiculous high point or a top. Uh, yeah. So and again, on a short wall, right? Like only 12 meters. Like most of us, like Toronto's got a lot of short walls, but we've got walls that can pretty much match that. And if you can set a long lead world championship route on it, then great job to them. So I thought it was uh, I thought that part was awesome. Yeah. And the teaser would be that if if people have not, I really well, I don't want to say it. The, uh, <laughs> the lead, the, in the, in the combined portion, the, the, the routes are, are really, really cool too. Yeah. We'll say that. So that's all, that's all I'll say. Yeah. And the one standout result, Sean McCall making it back into finals and finishing in fifth place. Yeah. Awesome for him. Um, yep. We'll talk about it more next week, but you know, for the last couple of years, Sean has been putting up results that would make me extremely skeptical about whether or not he could end up becoming an Olympian. And this season has been amazing, and this World Championships was even better in a lot of ways. Uh, so, yeah, we'll get into it. We're, color we'll me have a lot stupid. To, we'll have a lot to talk about with Sean. Yeah. Um, in the when we discuss the at the next show, uh, yeah. real fast the the uh, I'll run through the U.S. Uh, in the men's, Drew Ruana was 16th in lead. Sean Bailey 21st. Nathaniel Coleman 30th. John Brosler 47. Zach Gallup 55th, and Joe Goodicker 69th. Uh, in the women, Brooke Rabatou, 15th, Ashima Shirishi, 28th, Kyra Kondi, 40th, Natalia Grossman, 53, Alex Johnson, 55, and Sienna Kopf was tied for 70th. There you go. So, there you go. Tail of the tape yeah. in the U.S. And then speed climbing, always yeah. my favorite nowadays. <laughs> um, I, I got to say, this – okay, on the women's side – Everything ended well. I was really disappointed to not see Anna Chaubert, uh, or especially Yiling Song in the finals. Yeah. Uh, there were some really rough runs from some of these people, but Alexandra Rudzins uh, sorry, Alexandra Miroslav, formerly Alexandra Rudzinska, uh, won it, and she won it on the fastest time of the event. And that's always something yeah. that seals it for me. If you get the best time of the entire event in the finals, I'm happy to give you that win. That's uh, that is a sick win. And the surprise being D New from China coming in second place. And yeah. of course, that helps you to your combined two, and you don't expect to necessarily make semifinals, and you come out with number two spot. 
that's a uh, sick work from her um, I've got of course I have the the video here I should have played this and we were kind of talking about Alexandra and just how how much of a ball of energy she is like there is a yeah. lightning storm going on inside of her as she's ready to to climb this wall she, and, she's just bottled up ready to I mean you can see it she, yeah. it's just the intensity and it's interesting looking at the the op, the total opposite of kind of the mental yeah uh, Dean Yu is asleep in a chair right now yeah she's, <laughs> Yeah, and and so that's just that's fascinating to just see how each of them sort of compartmentalize the 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 beta there in the early section. Mm -hmm. um, look at that neck and neck. This was really this such was, a great race. Yeah, that was a great run, and then um, Alexander kind of pulls away there. And an incredible time too. Like that's but I was that even, uh, sorry. What was the previous? Uh... Yeah, so that's breaking the the world record from uh, from Anik Jobert just uh, just like a year and a half ago and just yeah. only slightly slower than the world records that have been broken this year. So like genuinely incredible time. And of course she was very emotional after winning her back to back, uh, uh, speed world championship from last year. Um, yeah. What a big deal. That was really cool. That was cool. It's a, it's just, it's always, it's amazing what can happen in the speed when the top, the, the really top, you know, the world record holders, Reza and, and Yiling song, when they, drop out it's just um and then when a couple other big names drop out too it's just um it's it sets it up for it, it's that's like the appeal and also what we don't like about speed right it's exactly like so unpredictable yeah um you don't know if the 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 finals could be the people that have held the world records for the last few years or it could be people that you you know that have never been in finals before it just you never know what you're going to get so. yeah and uh and that's what we got with the men's final if uh, right. if anybody could have predicted seeing uh the uh ludovico fasali versus the jan chris finals race uh you could have been a rich rich man after yep. uh after this event um what a brutal event so cheesing zong falling out for a false start Sergey Rukin falling in the in the uh, round of uh, 16. Uh, who else? Daniel Bolderev false starting. Stanislav Kokorin falling off. Just like brutal. And that's not even to mention the fact that you had people like uh, uh, like Basamawem just losing their races. Reza yeah. Ali Porshena lose like with a fall, but losing their races. Um, and of course, this this final ended up being a little more stumbly. Yeah, not even hitting the. Uh, the uh, final buzzer there but like i mean so yeah this this men's one i got pretty pretty pissed and i'm i'm now on just a i i'm effectively declaring jihad against single elimination speed finals like i want double elimination at least for a world championship just spread yeah. it out over three days i don't care just because somebody gets a false start or whatever, please don't eliminate them from the competition give them one last chance to get in even from a lower bracket whatever just this, like, yeah, it just doesn't feel great. Ludovic Vassali never won a Speed World Cup before. He didn't even have the, the fastest time in the Men's Speed World Championship this year came in qualification from Dmitry Timofeev. It's yeah. just, like, downhill from there. So congratulations to the guys. And Ludovico stayed through it every way. He never false started when he, two of his opponents did. Um, but it just leaves you wanting more as a spectator, not to, you know, a win's a win. The guy's got the gold medal. I'm not going to take it away from him. I'm like, great job and decent time in the final. But as a spectator event, you know, you want to feel like the win is deserved. You want to feel like the winner fought back all the competition and had to fight hard for it. And it wasn't one of those events. Yeah. And I wonder what the, I, I wonder what the thinking is for having the, the false start instant elimination I, I know that's how like the 100 meter dash works in track and field um it's the same way you false start you're out of the race but that's not to there's that's not to say that climbing speed needs to do it that way necessarily um it's i would just be curious what the thinking is i because it's not like if somebody false starts it's not like you're going to add a lot of time onto the, it's like they false start okay start again it takes like an extra you know whatever couple seconds yeah and the fact that they did that for a really long time and then yeah. changed to this makes me think that they probably had good reasons because the old way was tried and true and they and mm -hmm. they decided to change their minds i don't know if it's i like i i doubt it's because of a reason like scheduling because it, it doesn't add that much time to the event but maybe there is something like the one thing that i felt was if you're the competitor that keeps getting 
um, sorry, what's the term for it? You're not the one false starting, but you have an athlete beside you that yeah. false starts. It throws you off your game. It makes you do another attempt when, like, honestly, you probably give your all for those starts on a speed wall. I can't speak to speed climbing. I've never tried it. Um, so I, I'm okay with with that part, but I don't want it to eliminate you from the competition. I would much rather it just drop you to a lower bracket um, and have you force yourself to, to fight back. But I, I don't want to... I, I definitely don't want to punish other athletes for somebody screwing up. That That is something that bothers me. I think it should come with a penalty mm-hmm. of some kind. And I feel like if you let them just race again against the same person, the penalty might be more on the other athlete. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's hard to say. It's it's a good point. It's just the, the downside of this single elimination is that you, you, get, you get finals where you don't feel sometimes like the best – competitor it's like they're the best competitor on the given day undoubtedly because mm-hmm. they've gotten to the finals but they're they bring me they're maybe not just the the best you know the best or the fastest speed climber so yeah. um yeah 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 and I, like i mean i'm not going to go too far in my campaign for the for the double elimination kind of thing but especially if we get to a point where our world championships no longer needs the the multiple days for combined event if that slowly breaks apart and there's there's less events for the combined or there's no combined at all then we've gotten in the habit of this like 10 day long world championship spend an extra day maybe on uh, on speed climbing separate uh, the days up a bit and maybe do it in three separate rounds you do your qualification rounds you do the like the round of 32 possibly or just a round of 16 round of 8 and then mm-hmm. save that uh, that upper bracket for the next day but i think it would it would certainly keep my attention more it would build a lot of suspense uh, it would give you those opportunities for those like genuinely incredible comebacks where reza has a shit fall and then he has to go like seven rounds fighting his way back up breaking like record after record like you get that possibility rather than the one and done and it's on a technicality like that's kind of a bummer Um, yeah i'd be okay with that i like that i we'll see we'll see the combined might be um as we've said with the 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 paris olympics possibly broadening uh the combined might be done after this after Mm -hmm. this olympics at least the way we know it yeah yeah Yeah. absolutely right um and just before we uh leave off speed uh there were some really good speed graphics as well this was uh this is a little screenshot of of the speed comparison so like immediately after the race uh they had put up these uh these and this was in motion so you could see these little um little avatars climbing up the wall it shows you their line it shows you how they're relating to uh um or like who was winning each split of the wall broken down by what approximately like three meter sections i guess uh and it it was really fun to watch and a cool little thing especially um illustrating the line of the climber that was the part that was easiest to take away Um, my one complaint is that this was only up for like six or seven seconds on the screen immediately after the climb and it didn't really leave much time for the guys to analyze it or talk about it i kind of wish that at the end of one of the rounds when they have that little break they could have chosen like hey this race was particularly interesting we're going to throw the graphic up for 30 seconds mike go to town on Mm -hmm. explaining what the deal is right um that would have brought so much value saying you know like this round's over we have to talk about this yiling song race check out you know this beta and then in this section she's breaking her record time through the bottom then everything slows down later on like now that we have that tool i hope we can rather than doing it just right after the race have it show up a little bit later and give the guys some some opportunity for some in-depth talk because that's such a great tool like what a good visualization yeah, and also great for the competitors themselves too for training. I mean, sure, and, yeah. and maybe some of them already have this yeah. with their speed training. But I mean, think about if you can look at that with your coach and say, okay, in competition, like this is the area, this is the split where I I slow down, or this is the split where I really start to struggle. You can isolate that section with just with just that one move or two, and really work on that and drill that to get faster at that like you know millisecond section. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's awesome. I loved it. I mean. The graphics were, yeah, it was, I don't know if they're, I don't know if the IFSC is, you know, you did your interview with Mike Langley and he was saying stuff about, or or, Charlie, or, sorry, Charlie, Charlie Bosco, yeah. and you were, he was saying stuff about the graphics and um, I don't know if they were listening to him or something, but I just, the the graphics were, uh, were great for this world championships. I also think, I think they might've miked the boulders for the, uh, did you notice that? It like we, when, uh, <laughs> after going off on it for a while, I didn't even for like the, uh, 
for the I think it might have been in the combined for the women's bouldering, but I know there there were sections where um like they would throw to a boulder and kind of slap it and you could really hear this percussive pop and I was like is that mic'd? Do they have a microphone there? I don't know. Yeah, so I don't maybe know. I, I feel like I would have noticed a, a really big difference. Maybe it's just cuz it was such a big hall and probably kind of echoey and there weren't that many like bodies inside the inside maybe. the event hall. So maybe it was just sound, especially if it was one of those like fiberglass just drums. Yeah. You can hear those things from like outside the gym if uh if you hit them hard enough. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and watch that just in case cuz maybe yeah. they maybe they had something going on. Maybe some if anybody was there that's watching this, like, you know, if Eddie happens to, to see this, maybe he could explain it a little bit. Tell us if it was mic'd. But in general, I just yeah, the the graphics mm -hmm. were awesome. Yeah, the and one thing was... about the graphics, though, those are being taken care of by the Japanese. Like it's it's not IFSC stuff. I think this is one of those scenarios where it is just Charlie and uh, and Mike are talking over the broadcast that that the uh, Japanese crews are putting together. Nice mug, by the way. Sick product placement. Hey, right merch. There. Good job. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's a well you placed. You too can get your your Plastic yeah. Weekly mug. Just kidding. But you can get a sticker and you can put it on a blue mug. There you go. And it looks like See? a Plastic Weekly mug, Nailed which is it. what I've done. Yeah. Um, Okay, so that was uh, that was bouldering and lead and yeah. speed. Uh, let's let's wrap up just talking about like overall impressions and surprises or anything like that. Yeah, let me look at the the surprises that I jotted down. We kind of already talked about Fanny. Another, I I hate to I hate to have all the surprises be people that struggled that I kind of sure. expected to do well. Um, and I, I don't I don't I don't mean to be negative in that yeah. way, but I also was surprised at Zhang Wan Chan's struggles. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, because he got 12th in bouldering. He hasn't had the best World Cup season. He didn't have the best bouldering World Cup season. You could argue he last season wasn't his best season either. Um, you know, 12th for Zhang Wan Chan, who, who was just two or three years ago, like, he was the best. Hot you know, fire. You, he, yeah, you would think that he is, like, the best or number two in the world. And so for him to not even make a bouldering final... Um, was a pretty big deal surprising unfortunate but that was a surprise for me um and his compatriot Jain kim uh who did you know she's been injured um so i know it was kind of a big question mark we weren't sure how how healthy she was going to be anyway uh but she ended up getting 22nd i think in the lead but what was really surprising more so than the placement was just how her climbing style was noticeably not what you'd expect from Jain kim she's normally She's one of the most enjoyable competitors to watch just because her style is so seems so effortless. She just kind of floats up the wall. And it was she it just to me, at least it looked like she was really trying hard on each move. Like you could really see that she was uh, she just didn't look as powerful. And I'm wondering if some of that is maybe because she couldn't train power as much because she was injured. I don't know. But uh, that was unfortunate, too. I felt bad for her. Sure. Surprise. Yeah. Um, the uh, I, that's the you know that's the big surprise. We've already gone over a lot of the other supply. Hans Puman um, making lead was another. That was a high point. Like he's not a name that we've talked about this season to my to my recollection. No, but uh, that was that was awesome. He was in one country. of the finals of uh, of one of the World Cups this year. But I can't remember which one. Yeah, but that was a that was that was a surprise. Cool to see. So those are the big takeaways. For yeah, me. um my my big one I think was was Jesse Pills in the bouldering. Mm. That was kind of a bummer. Like fortunately yeah. she did like decent in uh in uh in lead, of course. Although being the defending world champion, I guess maybe hope for a little bit more. And I guess her speed is probably good enough that she uh I don't know, for anybody that doesn't know already, like she's probably doing okay in terms of uh, the Olympic qualifications and stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that was one where I, I was uh, hoping for a little bit more of a of a fight. Um, I wanted to see, because last year the world championships ended uh, basically coming down to time, right? For the lead mm -hmm. world championships between her and Yanya. And that was deeply unsatisfying. Uh, and I kind of wish it was more of a rematch, right? Like I would have liked to see those two go head to head and really fight it out. And uh, the lead finals uh, from Jesse were, were slightly disappointing. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think she got sixth, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, didn't get a... You, you kind of expect... Maybe more so this year. It's it's a little different when the world championships are every two years, like they like they normally are. But you would think that the person who, um, who won last year would at least. It's like you almost expect them to at least get a 
podium, right? Because it's only a year ago. But yeah. I guess that's the that's the unpredictability of of climbing. It's just another World Cup, man. Just with like some extra gilding on it. That's yeah. That's all. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a whole different discussion. We're kind of out of time, but I <laughs> I don't know. They like the, the way how many people out there think of the world champions as the greatest competitor of that year. I I don't know. I I just don't know. I don't really think that way. Like, you know, for example, I, I not to no knock on Petra Klingler, but I remember mm. she won that one year yeah. and I remember thinking that was an awesome performance on that day, yep. but I don't I didn't consider her the best competition uh, boulder of mm-hmm. that season. And um, so I I don't know. The world championships are the, the context, how one contextualizes them and their implications. Um, I guess it's just going to be case by case depending on the person. But for me, it sounds like you and I are in agreement. I think the World Cup, the uh, kind of overall consistency on the World Cup circuit for the year is probably a better indicator of the the best quote unquote and it is a bummer that that thing that we consider the best indicator the thing we consider like the real prize also comes with no particular podium no particular fanfare it was like shoehorned into the back of the veil podium thing with some like taiko atmospheric music going on after a different set of podiums like it's it's kind of unfortunate that that doesn't have its own uh pomp and circumstance because it is the one that absolutely matters the most and it also occasionally doesn't have suspense like this year where we knew Yanya had already won, uh, you know, a week or two before everything was technically finished. But it is the prize that we're more likely to judge people on for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. I, ne- I hadn't really thought about that, but it is kind of a, a disappointing that there is not more fanfare to the winning to the winning of the overall World Cup. Mm hmm circuits for a year just split the world championships up always have a world championship for that discipline at the end of the season include it as part of the circuit just like make it obvious let's go come on yeah certainly don't that's very very simplistic like way to to do things but um yeah i yeah it is weird to drop it in the middle of the world cup season Uh, i know there there are issues then with well this is when the competitors are in shape you know but like it just feels it'll get easier when the money shows up because right now like you you do consider like oh the season and this and that and people want to climb outside blah 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 well guess what if we start giving people like actual prize money then they're gonna climb whenever the fuck we tell them to because we're not giving them three thousand euros we're giving them like thirty thousand euros right we're giving you a year's salary instead of just like covering all the money you spent so if we can get the money, uh, then hopefully we can have more of a uh, more of influence on this. And maybe when we get to that point, we can not worry so much about athletes wanting to compete in all three disciplines and just say, hey, this is the one you're good at. Be really good at this and uh, and just focus on that rather than like half assing it through all three of them. But again, again, like it's obviously complex. It's all tied together. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't think I have anything else right now unless I forgot any of my notes, but no, I think that's like pretty much where I'm at. I'm trying not to talk about the, uh, the combined stuff. I know it's, it's, it's tough. There's a lot to say. Uh, everybody watching this, please tune in because we're going to do a separate episode when the combined portion is over. There was just too much to do the whole world championships too too much to talk about too significant. So, uh, yeah, so we're not going to mention anything about the combined which is really hard because it's it's going on right now it's really exciting Mm -hmm. but um we'll get to that in due course i guess last thing i'll ask about we were kind of talking about some ephemera stuff like they had like that like little brass band come through which i'm glad you told me because that was hilarious and uh and cool um i i did find the crowds like a little bit underwhelming and i don't know if part of that is and again, we didn't get like that many crowd shots for the most part the crowds were like in darkness uh but when you did have that top down shot on the walls and you could see some of the front rows it was like kind of underwhelmingly um quiet in there i noticed that too quiet and also there was a there were a couple of uh shots where it would be like the competitor sort of and in the background you would see the stands and there was a lot of like the whole upper not section a lot is empty. of people there and yeah. i was thinking i was like geez as a director you would probably want to not get yeah. that that shot you would not want to show those empty seats yeah um yeah, it's uh, unfortunate uh, be, and surprising, I guess. I it just um, the crowd seemed pretty subdued, 
and and it did not seem like a packed house at no. all. Um, I don't know if those upper seats that were empty. I don't know if they were they were tickets or maybe the whole might not have even been closed. available. Yeah, could have yeah. been closed. Um, but uh, too bad, too bad because I think everything else about the event makes it come across as really special and really big. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it just seems like the. Uh, uh, like I'm thinking of some of the crowds from like, for instance, this year's national U.S. nationals were just like wild and, you know, they're, uh, you know, DJ and all this stuff. And like it just seemed um, and I think there are cultural differences there, too, probably a little bit. Yeah. Um, in terms of with, behavior. You know, yeah, sure. Yeah. Just but uh, attendance was was looked disappointing. And maybe uh, it's probably better to get to get that from some of the people that were there, because, of course, you know, maybe we just got those shots at bad times. But uh, from what the viewing audience saw, at the very least, it wasn't it didn't look like the kind of spectacle that drew the neighborhood out or anything. So, yeah, I would be very, very curious to hear from people that were actually there if you and I are misinterpreting this, because mm-hmm. it, it seemed just quiet and not um, and, and it, part of that could be too that it was just so much climbing right like, sure yeah it's it's like, like 10 like, days of it maybe maybe yeah, it'll be crazy packed for the finals of the combined although it turns out those events might not have that much suspense in it so we'll see what happens that brings up another point and I think this is a discussion for probably the next episode but mm. I'll just mention it that like it's weird that the so it's weird like the top seven uh get Olympic births. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, you know, a, a, but it's weird that w- like people will know it's like, I don't know how to explain this. It's like, it's weird. You know that after qualifiers, um, yeah. the, the Olympic birth. And so it's then, and, and I think this day and age, the bigger prize, at least from a publicity standpoint, rather than win, r- rather than how you place it, the finals of the world championship is whether or not you get that Olympic mm-hmm. birth. And yeah. it's like, so the, it's almost like I, w- I wonder if the finals for the combined, which haven't happened yet, I wonder if they're going to feel kind of anti-climactic um, because it's, it's going like- to come down to which Japanese climbers make it in. And we knew that, too. Right. Like we we assumed that going into the finals of the combined event, there were going to be more than two Japanese climbers. Um, and yeah. so that that was going to be a big deal. But you're you're right. Like, I think. I don't know if they have plans for extra cameras or trying to catch those emotional shots of climbers when they realize they're having that Olympic moment. But those moments have already happened now for so many of the climbers. Yeah. And yeah. We, we haven't even like started talking about it. Um, it. But so those videos are through Instagram and all that kind of stuff rather than through the official broadcast, which I think for the IFSC would be extremely valuable footage to have. Uh, for promoting their cause, like there's there's not too many opportunities to show athletes like in tears, dream achieved or nearly achieved. Um, so I, yeah, I hope somebody managed to get some of that footage that they can use for for publicity in the future because uh, there were some really big moments so far. Anyway, we're like we're definitely yeah. stepping way too far into next week's episode. Yeah, but <laughs> but it, uh, but it is yeah. interesting that the t- t- like the climax kind of comes at the end of qualifiers rather than yeah. the normal mode of competition is like the climax comes when at the end of finals. But yeah. it's like, well, if you think about the big climax of the world championships being you know competitors getting olympic births uh provisionally then like that's already happened and mm-hmm. the finals hasn't happened yet so it's just kind of it's kind of strange yeah. it's almost like uh you know you're reading a book and you get the climax like three-fourths of the way through rather than at the very end or something but yeah oh. anyway congratulations to yanya garnbrett and yeah. adam andra and yanya garnbrett and tomoa narasaki and ludovico fasali and uh, alexandra Miroslav, uh, on your world, uh, world championship wins. Uh, John and I will be back next week, Monday, probably, uh, to break down everything that happened in the combined event and everything that happens in the days after. Cause I imagine there will be lots of discussion about how spots are allocated. It seems like there's some possible changes to how Japan is going to deal with theirs. Maybe they're only taking one from this event. It's extremely unclear. Uh, so we're going to try and find out some answers and hopefully by next Monday, there is a clearer picture of what's going on. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you go back and check out most of the uh the climbing for the events because it's all good uh and we'll see you guys next week so uh leave a comment like it subscribe it whatever send john a tweet uh all that kind of stuff anyway have a great week enjoy the combined and we'll see you on monday